In 1932, in the midst of the Great Depression, successful engineer and academic Russell Lawrence wanted to start a new college that would expand opportunities for working men, allowing them to study at night and earn engineering degrees. America, Lawrence said, needed to prepare for the new technical era. Edsel Ford was then president of the company his father Henry had founded. They agreed to lease the vacant Ford Trade School on Woodward Avenue in Highland Park to serve as the school's original campus, and Lawrence Tech was born. And since then, we've had a long-standing and I think mutually beneficial partnership around respect for learning and being lifelong learners, the technology fields, and just a great number of um, Lawrence Tech graduates that have ended up in key positions at Ford. We're very proud. We were given an opportunity by a man who really changed America, a man who really created the middle class in America, so that the men who created the cars, who built the cars, could actually buy one. So we are part of that legacy that created the middle class in America. The, the partnership with, uh, linked to that great name of Ford uh, inspires us all and, and has for every year that Lawrence Tech has been in existence. Lawrence Tech first opened in the fall of 1932 with about 400 students. Most were working men pursuing engineering degrees after long days on the line. And these young men with families at home trying to bring themselves up above all that and reach the pinnacle of their abilities. Ten years later, Lawrence Tech was thriving. But then World War II began and most students went off to fight. Those who weren't overseas worked on the home front. Ford became a leader in America's arsenal of democracy, mobilizing industrial resources to win the war. Future Lawrence Tech student and Ford cost accountant, Bill Heitman, graduated from high school in 1944. So when I graduated at 18 on Sunday, on Monday I went in service. I went down to the Pacific and the equator area. After the war, soldiers flocked back to America by the millions. Heitman returned to Detroit and applied to Lawrence Tech. Uh, they accepted me under the GI Bill, and uh, I ended up there four years and got my bachelor's degree in business. Lawrence Tech's enrollment grew nearly tenfold, from a wartime low of 220 to 2,100 students in 1946. Ford was experiencing the post-war economic boom as well, selling vehicles to an expanding market. In 1949, it established the Ford Motor Company Fund in order to invest in local communities. Because Henry Ford believed that in order to have a sustainable company, you had to have a sustainable society. And he also believed that education is really the key building block of a sustainable society. The fund has donated over $6 million to Lawrence Tech. In most years, Ford has been Lawrence Tech's most generous corporate sponsor, having donated to nearly every building on campus. Like so many people these days, we live in the suburbs. Post-war expansion continued into the 1950s. Ford was selling more vehicles than ever before, as two-car families were becoming the norm. Lawrence Tech's student life was rocking, from huge dance parties and athletics to a nationally ranked basketball team. It was time for Lawrence Tech to move out on its own, to its current campus site in Southfield. By the 60s, LTU graduates were assuming significant leadership roles at Ford. LTU alumnus Bill Innes actually helped Henry Ford II realize his dream of winning 24 hours of Le Mans. Ford had hoped to buy race car manufacturer Ferrari, but negotiations fell through. He wanted to spite Ferrari and win Le Mans because Ferrari had been winning Le Mans. Uh, so he put together a race team, threw all his money and force behind it, and in uh, 1966, they won. Innes was then head of the engine and foundry division, where he developed the GT40 powertrain that led to Ford's astonishing win. Ford GTs went on to win the race for the next three years. Innes was soon promoted to executive vice president. If the gasoline shortage has got you scared. When the 73 oil shock hit, Ford was ready with a herd of fuel-efficient cars. So see your Ford dealer and saddle up. Innes was responsible for the 74 Mustang II. Get a horse. The Detroit News dubbed him Mr. Clean for his leadership in small car safety and engine emissions. 
When the second oil shock hit in 79, another LTU grad at Ford was prepared. Charles Knighton developed and launched the Ford Escort, one of Ford's best-selling vehicles of the 80s. Through much of the 80s, in fact, all new car development was managed by LTU alumni. Knighton ran small and mid-sized cars, while Louis Veraldi developed large cars. Throughout Veraldi's successful years at Ford, he remained active at his alma mater. While a trustee, he brought in a $1 million Ford donation for the Buell Building Fund and always stayed engaged with students. We participated in Sports Car Club of America and we had a Ford Mercure donated to us. And I'm, I'm quite certain Lewis was the person who made that available to us. As generous as he was to the university and the students, Louis Veraldi's contributions to Ford Motor Company were far more impactful. It's a name that's very well known throughout the Ford community because of his kind of being the father of the Taurus. For us, now there is a personal car. The Taurus broke the global boxy car trend with a soft, sculpted shape and improved aerodynamics. Veraldi's Taurus quickly became the country's number one selling vehicle. When Bill Heitman retired from a long career at Ford, the last thing he did was buy a Taurus. My wife was excited to get a new car and a new Taurus, and I've had Tauruses ever since. The same year Lawrence Tech updated its name, Edsel Ford II spoke at LTU's commencement. I'm very pleased there are a lot of Ford graduates here, so I really feel like I'm amongst friends. Alternative energy car competitions were all the rage at college campuses in the 90s. Ford donated Tauruses to future car teams who modified them to maximize energy efficiency. Ford HEV specialist Tom McBride worked on one of those vehicles. It was one of the most defining uh, experiences of my life because prior to that I had not had any interest in uh, getting into automotive. Once I started getting into there, uh, working on the vehicle, I fell in love with working with engines and transmissions, and that kind of guided my career after that. Ford has helped LTU develop many prized academic programs. Among the recent successes are LTU's transportation design and industrial design. Lindsey Grant graduated in 2014 and soon played a key role in designing the 2015 Lincoln Continental. We wanted to create this nice color that was very like saturated and grabbed people's attention, but not flashy at the same time. It was a lot of fun, and the team that we worked on the Continental with was amazing. Um, it's such a cross-functional team. You know, we're not all just working by ourselves. It's a very much a team effort, which I think is really important to have a successful product. Transportation design grad Colin Bonathan went from LTU classrooms to working on an historic vehicle in a few short months. The assignment? helped design the 50th anniversary GT in honor of that famous race car Bill Innes worked on in the 60s. We looked at a lot of Formula One cars, a lot of Le Mans prototype cars, and we wanted to take that sort of technical arrow and integrate it and still have uh, a historical tie back to the original GT40. Uh, so it was a delicate balance between modern technology and also having that history there. I mean, I have specific recollection of interfacing with him as a student. I sat next to him and helped uh, guide him as a mentor during his internship. And it's been really fun to watch his entire educational career now turn into a professional career. Support for LTU students hasn't been limited to engineering and car design. Three teams of architecture students have won the Ford College Community Challenge Grant to do sustainability research projects. One winner, the Pioneer Renewal Project, involved disassembling an abandoned home in Detroit piece by piece to keep the materials out of landfills. Their work was featured on local TV. I am very grateful for Ford for funding that project. It has really been beneficial to actually work hands-on in taking apart a house, seeing how it's put together. But Ford gives to Lawrence Tech in many ways beyond financial support. Two Ford executives currently serve on the university's board of trustees. Lloyd Royce asked me to join the board in 2010, and it was really an honor to be asked. You know, so it looks like it rolls under. Ford leaders are often seen on campus, bringing their expertise to classrooms. One of my classes that I remembered actually was engine class. It was engine theory, and it was taught by a Ford Motor Company uh, engineer. Ford has been a very good partner and a sponsor, a mentor. Their managers have been mentors to us. Of course, they always keep an eye out for talent. I am recruiting lead for Lawrence Tech, strengthening the Ford-Lawrence Tech relationship. The real reason is that I genuinely love Lawrence Tech. I value my time that I was there for both my bachelor's and my master's. 
and I owed a great deal to Ford as well. And by being so involved with recruiting, I feel like I'm giving back to both. Ford has been not just instrumental in hiring our graduates, but of course allowing our students to do internships, co-ops at Ford Motor. Currently we have three students who are in a formal co-op program. Ford is very good with working with me and working with students in general, and they really are there to help you and make you a better engineer for when you graduate and come to work with Ford full time. Many students first connect with Ford at the recruitment event called Ford Day. We have over, I think, 1,200 alumni here at Ford Motor Company, and so we know we get good candidates from Lawrence Tech. So we created a Ford Day. We bring about a dozen vehicles out because it's a chance to walk around the product with the students and talk about the type of work that they could do at Ford. It's always a fantastic event for us, Ford Motor Company, and me personally, to come on campus and see how the campus has matured. My goal in being an engineer is to build a car I like and then buy it. <laughs> for me, it's a kick to see the students. They're so excited. They want to know everything that you're doing. They want to know everything about the, the vehicle. I really encourage my leadership team to look at LTU because of the curriculum, because of uh, the strong student base, um, you know, just because of what they're learning and what they can bring to the company. And we have um, Lawrence Tech graduates in nine of our functions here at Ford. And to me, that's a great sign that we see value in a number of disciplines, not just the traditional engineering, although we have a huge engineering population here. So for the future, I see that penetration growing across the functions. Each year, Ford taps several of LTU's best and brightest for its innovative FCG program. The Ford College Graduate Program is a three-year program where students or new employees will rotate through different positions. I can figure out exactly what I want to do because computer science is so, it's so broad. I can't, um, do I know exactly what I want to do, computer scientist? At this moment, no, I don't. And I think that's why Ford kind of spoke to me so well. It's been a great 85-year run for Ford Motor Company and Lawrence Technological University. Sometimes, relationships truly do improve with age. There's no denying that there is a great partnership between Ford and, and LTU. And um, I think it's just going to get stronger. Lawrence Tech is a critical piece of uh, Southeast Michigan's um, economic ecosystem, I think. They produce really critical talent, in, especially in STEM fields, that we need to compete and win in today's you know, global economy. Working as this partnership, uh, we really have been a powerful force for good in the American economy. 85 years and hopefully another 85 years to come.